Hi guys, and welcome to uh, grade 10 discussion on functions. Now, um, I'd like to start off this introduction by just taking you back to what you know already, all right? So you, you, you did algebraic expressions in grade nine, for example. And one of the things that you used to do is the process of thinking about a number and uh, uh, going through some uh, steps around that number. For example, if you can think of any number, let's call this number x, and multiply this number by two, and then maybe subtract three from the answer. Okay, so then for the answer, you subtract in three. And we know the nicest way to write this thing is to say, well, 2x minus 3. Now, when you look at this, we know by now this is an algebraic what? Expression. Now, what if I want to know then the answers to the different numbers that I can use in the place of x. Remember, x represents any number. That's what we said. If that is the case, then we usually used this process of input and output, okay? So then I'll say this thing here is equal to y, right? That's what we had. So in other words, now I have an equation, y equals to 2x minus 3. But in this equation, one thing that is important to note is that I have x as the input value, okay? And what is the process? This whole thing is the process. The process is that I must multiply by two. After multiplying by two, I must take the answer and subtract three. And y in this case is my output value. Now, when we talk about functions, we are basically taking this whole thing here that I've written, but now we want to make it like, um, uh, we're going to write it in a nice formal way so that we can be able to actually represent it on the Cartesian plane. In this case, the input represents actually what we call the independent variable And the output represents what? The dependent variable. And I'm sure you guys remember this from that input output process that we, you discussed so thoroughly in grade nine. You actually used a table back then. So what this means is that this one is dependent and that one is independent. So what it means is that the values of y depend on the values of what? Of x. Okay, so in a simple way, if we want to nicely describe what a function is or explain to someone what a function is, we can say a function is just a rule that explains or represents a process. I hope you are with me. A process in which there is an input and there is an output, okay? So you put something, there is something that comes out. So I think um, that's another simple way to really explain this. So the very important fundamental things out of this is that uh, functions, guys, are just basically uh, uh, coming from algebraic expressions, except for the fact that now we make things formal, we are putting an equation there and we have now two variables, okay? And remember, even in algebraic expressions, you used to have two variables, right? So in this case, we're gonna learn how to actually represent these algebraic expressions on the Cartesian plane, if you may like. You can actually look at it that way. So in essence, not meaning to be boring or redundant in any case, when you look at a function, you are looking at some rule that helps us to be able to 
take algebraic expressions and represent them on the Cartesian plane and have, in other words, have a picture of what we uh, actually describe in words, okay? So uh, uh, functions help us to be able to kind of get a picture or draw a picture of what can be described in words, right? And you will see real life applications of functions, including uh, the one on finding actually the rate of infection for things like the coronavirus that we are currently expressing and we are on lockdown. We will see that functions can help us to actually decide whether it is still good to continue with lockdown or not and can make predictions and uh, we help us to make predictions actually on how the spread of the virus can go. They are used in finance, they are used in biology in the case of modeling viruses, they are used in many different fields of life, okay? So let us go back to our function, y equals to 2x, I think I said minus three. So here's the y-axis. If you look at my Cartesian plane here, the grid, I've got a grid in the background and there's my x-axis. So usually what you guys would have is a table where you've got your x values, right? And you have your y values. And as I said, you know your x values are your input, your y values is the output. I'm going to start from minus three, uh, go to minus two, zero, one, to end maybe at three, it will be enough. And all you have got to do now is to do some substitution. What happens if you put a minus three here, you're gonna have a minus six and minus six minus three is what is a minus nine. Guys, you can go on and do this. I'm going to go right here and use my software, the GeoGebra that I've got here. And actually GeoGebra will plot this for me, will do this process for me instead of taking time, but I urge you to do it. If you do it correctly, guys, you are actually going to get something like this, a straight line, like the one I'm having here, and you're going to get some coordinates. Let's call this point A, and I'm going to actually go ahead and make sure that we can see the coordinates of that point A. You can see it is zero and minus three, here is another point, B, and I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that we can actually see the coordinates of this point B. So the point B um, that we have here, we are all, I'm going to just show the coordinates just now and uh, so that we can also have a discussion around that. So what we see here is that we've got two points, one point, is on there, or you can say shows us where the graph cuts the y-axis. Another point shows us where the graph cuts the x-axis. Here, there we say the graph cuts the y-axis because the x-coordinate is zero. Here we say the graph cuts the y-axis because the y, I mean the x-axis, because the y-coordinate is zero. But there's a nice word we use for this, we call this the x-intercept and we call this the y-intercept. Now, what we have just done, we have taken that description of words. Think of a number, any number multiplied by two, then subtract three from the answer. And we have taken this and actually represented it on a picture. And what this picture shows us, it's another story that we will now have to look into. In other words, interpretation of the graph. I will leave it here for now. In the next video, we will continue from this point with things like the meaning, the interpretation of this going on. Cheers.